if you're a technical trader like I am, you can see it in the charts. Everything is, is you know, long term has eroded and it's just a matter of, you know, the masses picking up on it. And I think that's going to come January, February, March. Big break to the downside. People thought, you know, they had a bad year in 2022. Right. I think 2023 is going to be the one that they just cracks their head open. They're like, how did I just lose 40% of my wealth? And I'm supposed to retire next year or something yes. like that. And it's going to be absolutely devastating. It's, it's really scary. I mean, I hate playing the scare card, but that's what right. the charts and the economics to me are pointing to. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Our guest today is Chris Vermeulian, Chief Market Strategist at the thetechnicaltraders.com. Welcome back, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Ivan. It's It's been a long time, so it's an absolute pleasure having you on. So, yeah, Chris, great. Silver, the silver and gold, uh, the prices are moving up this past uh, week. Do you believe that we hit the bottom in precious metals or um, are we off to the races? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really depends on the time frame we're looking at. And and this is where I find it difficult to explain in a way because people always want to, they, they naturally want to hear what they want to hear and they discard the important stuff, which <laughs> I think they've hit the bottom for, for this year. I think we're going to have this, we've already started what I think is kind of a year end rally. I think we're going to see gold, silver miners. Uh, I mean, they're already kind of leading the pack to the upside. I think we still have a uh, end of year rally in stocks and bonds and precious metals. I think everything is just going to kind of float back higher towards the end of the year. Uh, gold miners, silver miners are leading the way along with energy uh, stocks. So I, I think they've hit the bottom this year, but have they actually bottomed? Mm -hmm. I think there's actually a long ways to go. My belief is the stock market, the economy is going to roll back over early in 2023. We could see six, eight, 12 months of downward selling in the stock market and th there could be so much selling pressure that really metals can't can't hold up they can't buck the trend and go the opposite direction unless there's mm -hmm. some crazy hail mary event that that bucks the trend if, i'll just show you i'll just share my chart real quick and i'll just show you kind of where a scenario type of thing that um mm -hmm. could be unfolding here which I, I feel like the stock market right now is in this stage three topping phase i feel like we're we're kind of flirting with this breakdown level in the stock market. Maybe, maybe this holiday rally is this kind of this last kind of hurrah in stocks and bonds before we, mm -hmm. we actually start what I think is going to be the start of a real bear market that could last six, eight, 12 months. And when we go through a bear market like this, a stage four decline, almost everything goes down. There's margin calls. There's enough fear in the market right. that people just can't hold on. And when there's that kind of selling, we pretty much always see gold um, sell off with that. And a good example is uh, if I go to the weekly chart of gold here mm -hmm. and we take a look of what happened, let me go back to 2008. Mm -hmm. What's what's really interesting here is in 2008, we had the stock market correct and gold pulled back about 34%. Uh, and, and that's just because there is so, like the scenario, the bullish scenario for gold was very strong, just right. like it is right now. But the problem is, there could be so much selling pressure. It just is going to keep pulling it down. It's going to fade lower. It's not like it's, I mean, a 34% correction is big, but I think we're in the same scenario. The 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 outlook for gold long-term, I think, is more bullish now than it's ever been. Same with silver. Mm -hmm. But the problem is when there's mass market selling, the whole globe is, is going into recession. Uh, people are frightened. They liquidate positions. And, and you know, from where we've seen this high, I think we could still see gold pull down roughly 34 percent again and if you just draw a line across this chart this is a, a you know a pretty significant level where we broke into the you know right. the start of this bull market phase and so gold could come back down and test this level before going off to 2500 3500 and and so on and so forth so i think we got an end of year rally uh, that started and i think it's going to go higher but i think we're going to see a great opportunity to get into metals later in 2023. Uh, the big question is, if gold does <laughs> fall to say 1400, right? what can we actually buy the physical at? Are we actually going to be able to buy it at 1400? Or is it still <laughs> going to be at like 1800, which is really frustrating because here we've got low gold and silver prices. 
yet we're paying these crazy premiums. Oh yeah, the and silver, I gotta, the, I, the American Eagles, like the silver premiums, they're like twelve, thirteen dollars <laughs> above spot. Which is, yeah, which exactly. Is so so that's the that's the big scenario. That's what I'm I'm worried about um, going forward. Here is we're going to see a, a nice decline in metals. A great spot to add to our stacks. So but we're still paying through the nose for the physical. I want, I only really want physical. I don't want to buy yeah. an ETF so much uh, and all that stuff uh, just because it's not the real deal. And who knows what's going to happen if something implodes, right? So it's basically it's safe to say that you think the stock market's going down another 20, 30%? I, yeah, yeah. So what if a black swan comes up the next, let's say, two, three months? Will that force the Fed to pivot? And do you think, like, let's say the stock market would turn around and go back up? Yeah, I think if the Fed wanted to do a pivot, um, I mean, everybody's leaning on the Fed. Uh, yeah, I mean, the we're, last we're statement all he, for one. <laughs> yeah, everybody's been leaning on them. It's like it's like we're, we've been spoon fed, right? And the Fed <laughs> says something not. I mean, I thought the last Fed statement was in line with what I was expecting them to do. Yet everybody freaked out and, and sold. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, it, to me that wasn't really anything special. But people are so sensitive, and I, it's just a matter of time before I think the Fed breaks. And the big question will be, does it, you know, how much do stocks and bonds have to fall and hurt the average investor before they're like, okay, we are killing most of our population here, like of the wealth. Because uh, right. if you think about it right now, we're in that like kind of perfect scenario where the majority of, of, of people like baby boomers and up, they all have most of the wealth. Like baby boomers hold 51% of stocks in the U.S. stock market. They hold over 50% of the wealth. And, and they're, they all need that money because they're coming into retirement. If we right. go into some huge catastrophe and collapse of 30, 40, or 50% in the stock market and bond prices, it's going to devastate the United States and, and really every country in terms of retirement and people's people having to go back to work. So there will be a point here that stocks and bonds hit a breaking level and the Fed's like, you know what, we've mm -hmm. got to do something because it's just hurting everyone at the worst time. Right when they need their retirement, retirement money, they're, they've just lost most of it. Yeah. Um, so it's going to really, you know, it's going to trigger them. They're, they're, they're going to have to do something, I think. Uh, that's the way they see it. So, Chris, we're seeing huge numbers get depleted from uh, the COMEX and LBMA for silver and gold. What's your opinion? Will the trend ultimately uh, continue? Yeah, I don't follow it too closely, mm -hmm. but it, it sure feels like it. I mean, I feel like, um, you know, ever since the whole silver thing with Reddit, everybody kind of getting on board <laughs> and becoming, you know, us in this, this group already have been following kind of all the manipulation and stuff going on with silver and gold for so long. But I think... Kind of the whole Reddit thing this past summer, the, the, the you know, in the past year and change has got so many more people on board and wanting mm -hmm. to be on side and to screw the big guys, and take <laughs> down all the manipulators, JP Morgan, all that stuff, right? Uh, it's definitely creating this huge premium and we're seeing physicals just get depleted. I, I have a feeling that's going to continue and it's going to get worse, which comes back to the first comment I made, like if gold drops to four, 1400 and silver drops to Twelve dollars. Oh, don't say that. I mean, <laughs> what are we going to be paying in a premium? We'll still be paying twenty five dollars for a silver round, even though it could be yeah. worth twelve dollars. <laughs> so, like that, that's what we think is crazy. Like, even if it goes down to twelve, thirteen bucks on on spot price, the the actual physical market is completely detached from uh, the actual spot market. So, do you think something will break there ultimately? I think it's got to. I mean, I don't know how, like, the. I mean, the financial system is so corrupt. It, it's ridiculous. It's a bunch of crooks running everything, <laughs> it feels like. Something's got to break. But if the crooks run it and they're constantly cheating and manipulating, they're just going to keep doing it. And they've been doing it, as we know, forever. As long as I've been born, they've been uh, been doing this. And we have we thought silver was going to have a huge breakout like 15 years ago. Right. And, I mean, it's had some big breakouts, but I mean, you know, 100 plus and for this whole big short position and the unwinding to event event to happen, it hasn't happened yet. I think something will break. I think there's finally some movements and and uh, enough transparency starting to come through that maybe something's going to snap and break. I mean, the, I think the only way to play this whole thing in silver at this point is um, you you play an ETF that actually goes up and down with silver. And um, because the premiums, I don't think are going to budge very much. I think silver could drop a bunch and nobody's letting go of their silver right. and you know nobody can stockpile it and make more and so i think it's going to be difficult to get lower physical silver prices even if you know 
the market goes down and something I think is going to break eventually. But I mean, it could be another 10 years from now yeah. for all we know, but I do feel like we're getting closer. There's a... <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with all the chaos in the world, are you putting your money more towards silver, gold, or other commodities? Where are you putting your money right now? Yeah. I mean, right now as a short-term tra uh, trader, I mean, uh, we're focusing, we're in gold miners. We just sold some of our SPY position uh, this week and locked in some money on, on the, the big rally, mm -hmm. uh, the big pop and rally. Um, I think growth stocks are going to come back for another push higher into the end of the year. Now, these are short-term plays. Other than that, once this stock market finishes this little rally, this end of year rally, I think we'll be we'll be back in cash. We'll be looking to trade inverse ETFs to profit from the collapse in the markets. And then, of course, we'll just be waiting for the stock market to give us a new bull market buy signal. And that's that's I mean, that could be a year away, but I mean, right. that's going to be unbelievably amazing because we'll see precious metals should bottom first. They're usually one of the, the early signs. And then we can start looking at buying metals and then looking at other assets. It could maybe not just stocks, but we could look at potential real estate. We could look at businesses, all kinds of different stuff. The, the economy, I think, is going to get really tough. Businesses mm -hmm. are going to go bankrupt. I mean, we got Amazon laying off like 11,000 people. Facebook's yeah. laying off 10,000 people all before the holidays. I mean, there's all kinds of them. So the the music has... I think it stopped. It's just people don't want to realize they're still singing the song in their head, realizing it hasn't ended yet. <laughs> if you're a technical trader like I am, you can see it in the charts. Everything is, is you know, long term has eroded. And it's just a matter of, you know, the masses picking up on it. And I think that's going to come January, February, March. Big break to the downside. People thought, you know, they had a bad year in 2022. I right. think 2023 is going to be the one that they just cracks their head open. They're like, how did I just lose 40% of my wealth and I'm supposed to retire next year or something Jeez. like that. And it's going to be absolutely devastating. And it's, it's really scary. I mean, I hate playing the scare card, but that's what right. the charts and the economics to me are pointing to. Yeah. We were, uh, we were interviewing some people this, uh, this week and what really came up was like laying off 10,000 people, 11,000 people before the holidays um, yeah. usually it never happens before the holidays, which is pretty crazy. Now, another topic, Chris, is Russia with everything happening with uh, the Ukraine war. And, uh, now obviously they've been kicked out of SWIFT. They said mm -hmm. the, the, they said the West has essentially stole its foreign currency and its gold reserves. Uh, will some countries look at that and say, I'm not storing my gold with other countries anymore in Europe? Right. Like, do you think they'll store it anymore? Or do you think the, tr the trust is completely out the window? Uh, I, th I think the trust is kind of going out the window. I, I mean, people have this natural tendency to, you know, protect number one themselves. Uh, and I don't think there's a whole lot of trust. I think a lot of people are moving metals. I mean, I think we're seeing a lot of metal move out of North America. It's going to, you know, the BRICS. I mean, I think, I think mm -hmm. these certain countries, it's crazy. Cause I think it was only like two years ago, Canada sold all of their gold holdings. They didn't even have much, but they sold every single thing they had. Idiots. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Anyways, they sell everything. And like all the other countries who are kind of struggling are on the outskirts and, right. uh, you know, don't get along with other countries. They're like stockpiling gold. I think there's going to be a huge move in, in gold and precious metals down the road. I, I like them both. I'm heavy, more heavy weighted in silver, not by much. I think I'm about 60% mm. silver. Um, because I don't know which one's going to go bigger. You just you just never actually know. It, right. the, whatever you think most is likely going to happen, it's like the other one happens. So <laughs> uh, gold to me is the more global versus the speculative type of play. And I think the whole world is worried about their currency. The whole world's worried about um, all kinds of economic stuff. And, and to right. me, you know, gold could be a shining star, could be a backed currency again. Uh, so... Yeah, I, I think everybody's moving gold to their countries other than Canada. Right, yeah, <laughs> Canada. Just, we just sell it off and take it. <laughs> just insane. Well, Chris, we really appreciate you for coming down and talking to everyone at Wall Street Silver. It's It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Awesome. Take care.